Good afternoon, crafters. We are live. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I'm the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts. And this afternoon we are bringing you a Facebook live demonstration. So today we'll be making a card from start to finish featuring the Coastal Currents collection. So a collection that launched um, just a few weeks ago. Something that's really, really lovely as well to build a story around, to build a whole scene. And we're going to be layering up and telling that story through a card making design today. So we're going to give it a few minutes just to so that everyone who wants to join us live can find us and do so. I know we were a little bit late in advertising uh, this Facebook Live, so apologies for that when we only advertised it this morning. Um, we've got a couple of people joining us already, so that's lovely. Um, but it is well worth mentioning that these Facebook Lives are available to watch back at any time. Um, and we do upload them to YouTube as well. So there's there's a whole host of Facebook Lives over on, on our YouTube channel where you can watch back, obviously pause, rewind, fast forward, whatever you want, uh, where we do take you through um, making cards and stuff like that. Also worth mentioning, if there's, you know, a particular die collection you want to see uh, demonstrated or a particular technique or a card base or whatever it may be, um, do consider popping along to our really friendly and inspirational Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, uh, where we do have a pinned post where you can add your Facebook Live requests to as well. And we will be sort of going through those, anything that we can uh, do, we will absolutely do so. So always add your requests there. Lots of people joining us already, which is lovely. Um, Christine says, I can't see anything on my screen. Oh, Christine, I don't know. We always give the lives a little while, uh, essentially just a bed in. So I've changed the setup uh, whereby I've moved the router of our internet far closer to uh, my studio. Um, I think for a couple of lives, it was a little bit hampered by the Christmas tree. <laughs> Such is modern technology. Um, but we do do our best with regards to technology and things like that. A couple of people saying no sound. Again, I've been checking the mics and I'm looking at the levels and uh, sound is being recorded. Hopefully there's people out there that can see and hear this okay as well. Elaine says, hi, hello, Incarnation Crafts. Just finished work for two weeks. So looking forward to some craft time. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I guess um, a few of you will be enjoying your Christmas breaks coming up soon, which is really lovely. Uh, Sophie says, hi, Hannah, hope you and the crafting family are well. Merry Christmas. Yeah, thank you, Sophie. Well, we are all very well. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, Viv says, afternoon, Hannah. Lovely to surprise us to have a Facebook Live today. Oh, I know, isn't it just? Um, Dawn says, brought the dies. Looking forward to the demos. Yeah, we do try and bring you demos on pretty much everything, especially when we've got... Um, you know, particular card shapes and collections and things like that. We do try and bring you Facebook Lives across everything. Uh, Sandra said, can't wait to see us again. Happy Christmas to all from Adal Cornwall. Ah, oh, thank you. Happy Christmas, Sandra. Um, lots of people with a lot of love for the Coastal Currents collection, which is, as I say, a really lovely collection. If you're not familiar with it, hop on over to our website. It is available, carnationcrafts.co.uk. As we always do at the end of Facebook Lives, I will pop up a, a link with the ingredients as well um, for each of the, the designs. Um, and that just means you can absolutely go on. And if you haven't got this collection, perhaps you'd like to, to purchase it for Christmas. Um, oh, Christine can see now. That's That's good. Uh, Viv says buffering a bit, but okay now, yeah, that's why we let the, the streams run for a little while. I don't know why it just takes a little while to get up and, and running. Maybe it's just either hamsters in the line having to run a little bit faster in their wheels, maybe. Um, coastal Currents. Rather than using the card shape in this one, because this, you know, if you click on um, Create and Craft Catch Up Service, uh, the shows are still there. You just have to scroll back to, to the dates um, Coastal Currents was. Um, and you can also watch the shows back, which is, is really handy. But I wanted to do a card shape which could be used, A, with your Coastal Currents, if you wanted to copy the design exactly. You are more than welcome to do so. But I wanted to bring you a card shape, um, which is a quite a nice... It looks like an intricate card shape, but it's not. And it's a really easy way of doing it. So I wanted to share that with you. Elaine says, coming through loud and clear. Fantastic. That is good. Um, I did say after the last Facebook Live, a couple of people were saying um, they couldn't get sound for the whole thing. And um, it, I don't know what, what Facebook streams do and all this sort of thing. But along the bottom of uh, the screen, there's usually different options. And there's some that say like um, CC, which is your closed captions. You can toggle them on and off. And there are mute buttons as well. So it, it could be... I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying it might be. Um, some people, um, I know I have it set up on my, my phone and my iPad, whereby if videos play, um, like they pop up, you know how you're scrolling and they pop up, I have them so the sound's turned off. 
Um, so that might it, it might be a thing. So just look for a little speaker button with a with a cross through it and things like that. Uh, Helen says, I broke from work last week, but in for a few days with the kids whose parents work. So feeding them last day tomorrow. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, Betty says, I'm in North Carolina, USC. I can see and hear fine. Thank you, Betty. Merry Christmas to you all and your family, which is lovely. Uh, Christine's another another update. Your voice is now out of sync on my screen. All I can say, Christine, is I don't know. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, hopefully, when we start the demonstration, obviously it's it's just sort of guides and the hands and things like that. So it should make full sense when we are doing doing the Facebook demonstration. So what I'm going to do, I think we've probably got enough people watching live now. I'm going to turn the camera around, and here's a top down view for the uh, space we're going to be working in. So. As you can probably see from the little hint there, we are going to be working on a Z fold, okay? So all we've done is taken a card base of 300 GSM. Now this is cut down from um, an, da, 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 what size was it? A3. Um, I make a lot of my card bases from A3 cardstock. And essentially what I've made is a seven by seven card blank, okay? But before you go and cut your seven by sevens, we are going to be making this little strut bar that sits at the bottom, okay? Now, lots and lots of people ask, how do we construct this? How do you get it so you've got the scores in the opposite direction um, that fit exactly with the card base you're creating, okay? Super, super simple. All we've done is that. OK, so what we've essentially done is cut a card base, which measures seven inches across by nine inches along the bottom. If I just move that into shot, nine inches along the bottom. So seven by nine. We've then cut the top section off. So um, at two inches, obviously the width is the same, but we're cutting down two inches, turning that round and that now sits along the bottom. OK, everything's scored. So when we when we are cutting this card, seven by nine, we've then scored it at three and a half inches, okay? On the front of the card design. It's, it really is as simple as that. And of course, being a, a seven by nine card, we've of course scored at the seven inches to create your fold back design. So when I open it up, that is what that card base looks like, okay? Does, does that kind of make sense? That means when we trim the top off, Remember, we're cutting this two inches. If you then just turn it round in the opposite direction, so you've got, this is essentially the card base, and this is the front of this area. That will now sit perfectly at the base of your card to create this kind of like um, Z fold, but with a little strut at the bottom, okay? Hopefully I explained that okay. I don't know whether in my head that sounded a little bit complicated, a little bit more complicated than what it needed to be, but hopefully you've got the idea. So onto our card base, we're going to start building our scenes. So we have got from the Coastal Currents backing papers. These are available. Now this is, this. I need to make this really, really clear because lots and lots and lots and lots of people messaged in after the show to say they couldn't find the horizons and they couldn't find the the cliff faces and things like that that we're going to be using as our background papers. These are available in the following um, downloads. The complete original colorways. So you'll find them in there as backing papers. You'll find them in Up to the Lighthouse, which is one of the die sets. And you'll also find them in Happy Horizons. So they're available in two individual um, download files and also in the complete original colorway as well. We've then teamed that with uh, the darker blue from the Perfect Papers. So remember, the Perfect Papers are a cardstock that are designed to match in with the colours of the collection. And we are going to stick that in place using finger lift tape. Now, we're using finger lift tape because obviously we're making this kind of fold back card design. So we need the back of the card to be nice and flat. And you see here, I've trimmed that first layer just slightly smaller than the card base. So you get this little white surround, this little white border. And then the backing paper with the little sort of hazy sun sunrise on there, just like so. Now for my folded areas, I'm just going to keep checking everything's in the right place. 
I'm going to take my cliff faces. Remember, these are available to download in the original colorway download for coastal currents. They are also available in Happy Horizons and they are also available in Up to the Lighthouse. If for whatever reason you're opening your files and you're not seeing these backing papers, the quickest fix to do is just to re-download those files again and they will be there. OK, sometimes little glitches and things like that. So you just need to re-download them and they will be there. And essentially what this one looks like um, is... <laughs> Get it around the right way, Hannah. <laughs> Essentially, this is the kind of scene when you print out. It's on an A4 size um, background. If you wanted it on a smaller card, for example, just, just print it at a smaller size. Tell your printer you're printing on A5 or, or whatever it needs to be to fit in with your card shape. And it will obviously just shrink down the image to fit. Now, we only recommend shrinking images when it's backing papers and things like that. Obviously, when it comes to your vignettes, you need them to size to fit your dies so to print those actual size. But backing papers and things, you can, you can shrink down to uh, fit your appropriate card shapes. So I've trimmed the cliffs away. And one of my little cliffs is going to sit on the inside of my zigzag. And again, that's going to sit in place on some finger lift tape. So I'm just taking the carrier sheet of the finger lift tape, folding it back over the edges of the card. And then aligning it. Do you see how it allows me to align that nice and position it correctly before removing the tape like so? So we've got the cliff coming this way. And then on the front of the card, same thing again, we've got the cliff lace. But before I stick that side down, let's remember we want to put on our zigzag. So again, for the zigzag, we followed that same idea. This time around, just taking the sand elements from um, the, the background papers there. But because this is going to sit next to this part of the cliff, we've just taken an area where the cliff follows on and it'll joins on so it kind of makes almost like a panoramic view everything then matches in together easiest way of sticking down as we've said is just to align fold everything in align on your front cover like so hold that in place once you've got it all aligned and we are using let me just get a little grabby grabby side for this so again just folding that back we're using um a uh, red liner tape for the layers on this reason being and you hear me say this so often if we are doing any type of construction so here where we're building a base of the card or you're sending it through the post for example we're building a card base it's heavyweight construction you're going to be working with you want something that's going to be um stand up that's going to be nice and strong and red liner tape is a nice strong adhesive to attach your layers through so that's the front stuck in place don't try and stick everything in one foul swoop it's far easier to get one side positioned then you can go in and stick the other side just like so. I'm trying to keep everything in shot. Apologies, guys. There we go. So now we can stick this side just like so. And you get this wonderful fold back look to your card design. Now, because you're using these kind of little, um, what would you call them? Like little um, windows, if you like, into the scene, you kind of create this lovely um, dynamic look to your designs because you've got little um, areas, you've got the little sand, you've got the background there, you've obviously got the cliff here, everything then works together. Now for the front, as we mentioned, we do have the other cliff face. We're going to stick that over the top like so and it just creates a really nice neat finish to your card design so you don't see any of the mechanisms for the building the card itself. It keeps everything in place. Sue says, hello, my first live watching. Oh, hi, Sue. Thank you for joining us today. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, Tanya says, hello, my lovely. I've put down my village so I can see your beautiful view. Um, I'm glad the reprieve. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you and your boys. Merry Christmas, Tanya. I have heard about your village. And I know it's, it's almost a full architectural undertaking, isn't it? <laughs> OK, so there we built essentially what is going to be our seascape like so when it opens out obviously opens out fully and it still folds flat for a postage remember we're working on a seven by seven essentially card base because we've snipped that that piece down for the bottom 
If you do have any questions as we're going through, by all means, do type them up and I will do my level best to answer them. But from here, we're essentially going to build this story around this ocean scene. So I've grabbed a few of the die cuts from the uh, Coastal Currents um, collection. We've got sand, we've got the little boardwalk, we've got the lovely, lovely couple in there chairs we've got boats we've got birds we've got little crabs and all sorts so this is going to be just a sort of a tour de force when it comes to layering and adding in a full scenic design um i just keep noticing i've got a little bit of a, a dink all the way along so that's obviously a, a something is dinked my um my card shape all the way along so apologies for that but unfortunately when i'm, I'm packed all the way demos away sometimes then um, morphe cat does get in them and <laughs> helps himself if you like <laughs> okay so just going to start layering now i wanted something that plays around with the perspective on these designs and this up to the lighthouse die set really does that beautifully you've got this meandering path wonderful sort of um rickety fence all the way up you've got your grasses you've got the sand you know when it um you've had like uh, a windy day or a stormy day at the beach and it pushes all the sand up into those posts and things like that it's just so pretty but look how if we layer that over the cliff face there, because the cliff face is of the same colouring, because it has the same texture, it instantly looks like your lighthouse is sitting on top of that cliff. It instantly builds in perspective. So now this area of the card at the bottom is in front and the top has been pushed right back. Similarly, if I just show on the other, other cliff face side there as well, you can have it hanging over the edge there onto and overlooking the ocean. So you've got options. Now, because we are working with our mirrored vignettes you'll see the back of my die cut is just as beautifully colored so it does allow us a really nice level of craftability because we can go on and stick our dies where it's going to hang over the edge and you're not going to see any white bits that's all colored on the reverse so you get rather than having that line coming down the center of the card you're breaking the line up and putting in that more jaggedy edge which is lovely Karen has said, which one is this called, please? Um, if you're referring to the full collection, Karen, this is the Coastal Currents collection. Uh, if you mean just this die set that I'm working with here, I'm, I can only apologise because I know there's a lag with comments, so it's difficult for me to ascertain which one you mean. Uh, this one is up to the lighthouse, this particular die cut. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of pin flare because we're going to lift this um, particular die cut from the background of the card but notice i'm only putting the pin flare uh, strategically along the middle because obviously one edge of the card is going to hang over we don't want any glue on there um the reason we use pin flare glue gel is a nice three-dimensional glue it dries clear and it does allow me a little bit of wiggle room so i can go in and place so you get that nice like height where you've got sort of a little bit of a drop shadow underneath the path there. So again, it highlights the path, but it does mean I can go in and adjust and just make sure that little lighthouse is nice and straight and secure on the top of that cliff face. And you see how this, this card shape is going to come together really beautifully like so. On to this, let's go in with even more perspective. Let's go in with our, uh, what is this one called? I can't remember the name of this die cut. I know it's the corners, so you get the boat and then you get the, the little netting and things on the other side of the die set there as well. I will look them up, obviously, as I say, I will pop all the names up afterwards. But because we're working in our mirrored vignettes, this particular die set uh, cuts, so the beveled edge is on this side. But because we are using mirrored, I can go in and flip and reverse that and use this on the other way. Now, lots and lots of people say, well, the reverse of the die cut on your mirrored images it doesn't give the same finish. It won't. Simple reason being is the nature of dies. When you are cutting into your cardstock, you're going to get a beveled finish. You get your blade edge cutting down and pushing the cardstock down. It gives you a beveled finish. What you can do with the, the mirrored image on the reverse is just give it a little bit of shaping. Just smooth those edges over. It's not gonna, never going to look exactly the same as the normal way of cutting, but it does give you a little bit of a point of difference. 
The other thing you can do um, is make sure you're not um, to make sure you're not um, transferring any of the cut lines. So you know, on your plates. Let me just show you my plates. On the if I'm cutting, this is my once clear Gemini plate. All of those cut lines can transfer onto the backs of your die cuts. Okay, so all those little lines, if you're using a lot of pressure in your machines, will transfer onto the back. Easiest way cut tidy protect the back of your vignettes if you're cutting them with cut tidy okay so you can use it in a sandwich if you want to you can use it as a little pocket that just makes sure you get less chance of any deep cut lines transferring into the image so you're not going to detract from the overall beauty of your design now i've lost my pin flare there it is so you see i've just shaped that out a little bit given that boat a little bit of a curve and we're going to go in again with a little bit of pin flare just loaded to the center where we've lifted it and that's also going to sit just in the foreground like so and once again notice how i'm positioning it i'm taking away the sort of harsher lines of where the um, backing image stops and the matte and layer begins we're playing around with that perspective so here the boat edge is coming over that it's overlapping it's coming over the edge and it's coming onto the blue okay it just softens the line it softens the finish of this like so we can also add in more storytelling i love this one this is my absolute favorite i think the sentiment behind this little happy couple beach chairs and blankets this is this is wonderful. The soft tones in Coastal Currents really do sort of really give you the feel of Christmas Day walks on the beach, Boxing Day walks on the beach. It's that that time of year when the, you know, you've got that little bit of a chill in the air. It's down season. You haven't got sort of the riot of, of summer or anything like that. Everything's a little bit quieter. Everything's off season. And it's just a lovely, calming colourway on this. So for our beach chairs and blankets, what I'm doing is going in with my dense foam mat and my ball tools. And I'm just sculpting. I'm just easing out areas of the vignette whereby it's going to be a little bit more curved. So where we've got the people sat in the chairs, ball those out with your ball tool. So it makes the chairs look really full. Margaret says, I love the deck chairs. Yeah, me too, Margaret. I think they're so pretty. And Viv has said it's Land Love Corners. Thank you, Viv. That's really kind of you. That's really helpful. I could, I could see it in my head, but I couldn't, I couldn't get the words out for that one. So we're going to have our happy little couple hand in hand with their knees tucked into their blankets sitting on the deck chairs and they're going to be looking out towards the ocean there as well I think that's a lovely little sentiment so we're placing and just checking and we can see we just want a little bit of pin flare just on the bottom of their chairs like so now it, it could be that you prefer using foam pads it's exactly the same process um you know we each and all of us do find our own ways of working with things we do find our preferred methods mine personally is the pin flare glue gel but if you want to give that little bit of height you can also use your um uh, foam pads as well okay i I think we might go in with a little bit of sand but I think I'm going to leave that just to see how we get on I, I'd like to ground those chairs and kind of possibly bring in a little bit more sand in front of the boat again just building that perspective but that's something I can add a little bit later on and come back from Tanya says as Carla just said decided to name the seal pup Maureen do you know what <laughs> Tanya I really wouldn't put it past her she does come up with absolutely fantastic names for all of our wonderful creatures doesn't she <laughs> I think we need some sort of scene for our couple to be looking out at. So perhaps they're watching the boats come by in the water. Doesn't that look lovely? So you can see we can add in our tilted boats. And again, giving those a little bit of shape. I will do that with a ball tool, actually, because there's going to be an, we want a nice full sail, don't we? We want the wind taking the sail here. And just like so. And again, in with that pin flare glue gel. Notice how, again, we're just popping it in those areas where we've balled out the designs. Now, these are obviously sailing boats and you can see the, the orientation of them. You've got the water's edge along the bottom because the sailing boats all kind of sail and kind of tilt, don't they? We can then go in and just place them 
so they align with the water's edge like that. We do have two um, smaller boats cut. I will just pull those out too. And these are great because these little boats mean you can add perspective like we're going to do in this card. So we're going to build them with both the larger boat in the foreground and then the smaller boats in the background. Alternatively, what you can do is uh, create different size cards with them. So here you can have your boat on a larger size card like your 7x7. Seven seven. These would then work beautifully on your 5x5 five five cards or smaller cards, for example. Or why not create things whereby um, perhaps you want to pop uh, this on the envelope. So you're drawing on the inside of the card uh, elements on, on the outside, repeating them on the outside to then give that idea that, you you know, every element of your card is handcrafted. Perhaps you're going to make a gift bag or a little gift tag for a present you might be gifting with this set. These little boats would go beautifully on that as well. So these, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to do this with my tweezers actually. Lift and tuck in with the larger boat there. Could have done with that on the other way, Hannah, rather than being a little bit cack-handed. And just lifting and tucking. Again, it is another reason why I do prefer to use pin flare because you do have this ability to lift and tuck. You've got a little bit of wiggle room to go in and adjust as needed. So I'm just, again, adjusting the heights and adjusting the sails for those. This little boat, let me just see how we're aligning. Because I think I might want him on the other side just to fill this little area here. But I don't want him come, coming over the edge of that centre. So when the card is all closed, he's like another extra little bit you can find when you open the card. So he's going to sit just like so. And that's looking pretty. That's looking very pretty. Again, each element we're checking. So now you've got this story whereby the, the couple are watching the sailing boats go by. So, so lovely. Irene says, um, where can I find the background papers, please? Irene, the uh, background papers are available in three different downloads um, available on carnationcrafts.co.uk. If you head to carnationcrafts.co.uk, go on downloads, go on free downloads, and then click through to the uh, Coastal Currents collection, so you filter by collection, you'll find the backing papers I'm working with, so both the cliff faces and the sunset or sunrise design in... Um, up to the lighthouse, which is this one here. You will also find it in Happy Horizons, which has got the sun and then like the little sand dunes and, and the little um, path, little boardwalk as well. And you will also find it in the original colorway collection as well. So the two individual dies and then the full collection. Um, as I mentioned previously, if you haven't got those backing papers in your download, just simply download them again and you will find them there. Okay, okay, now let's see. So let's pop on here. Let's just start looking how we want to position these sand dunes because I do want to trim them down. Um, but I want them sort of coming a little bit further over like so. So anytime I'm trimming, what I'm doing is I'm taking a nice sharp pair of scissors and I'm following the cut line details that have already been laid down and just creating a nice edge on that. So that's rather than being sort of a, a blunt cut or a straight cut, we've just shaped that little cut there as well. Again, shaping the little sand dunes. And I think let's have them in front of my chairs. Uh, when we say grounding, it means we're positioning that particular set, that particular die cut. It's giving it a placement. It's giving it a real life finish, if you like. So we're just grounding our deck chairs like so. Being careful not to let any of these die cuts come just over the edge of the fold line because obviously that would just interrupt how the elements are working together or if I wanted to put them in a, an envelope, for example. So now we've got that little area there covered. I think for my other little sand dune, I'm going to snip that down for the other side and just take that out like so. So if, again, following those cut line details and then just shaping gently like so. Again, just balling those out with our fingers and a little bit of pin flare. And this is going to ground our boat as well. It's not, you know, it's not completely necessary. The boat's already got a little bit of sand in front of it. It is nice to layer. Sorry, I did that off camera. It is nice to layer these things up. So there you've got your little boat 
with your sand in the front as well. From here, what should we build next? Do you think we should have a little area of boardwalk? Perhaps we want some railings, for example. That would look nice, wouldn't it? Again, it could bring in this more sort of um, strong vibe. You know, again, another mid-ground, if you like, to the, the deck chairs there. That could look quite, quite pretty. So let's go in and trim down our boardwalk. So I'm just lining that up to see where we need to trim this off. I'm going to mark it with, where's my pokey tool? Mark it with my pokey tool. I'm not going to be too, too precious about it. But just going in and making a little mark. So now I know where I can go in with my scissors and snip. Like so. And again, by introducing the little um, decking, if you like, it again gives you an area onto which your your balustrades, I mean, what would you call them, balustrades, railings, for example, can sit nicely as well in front of those little boats. So again, you're, you're building your layers to this particular car design. This one, I'm actually gonna just move my shells out the way. I'm gonna stick with my everyday glue because we don't want these being too, too raised. So we can go with our nice flat glue, which is our white glue. And I'm going to use, where have you gone, glue applicators? There you are. There you are. And again, just going in with the glue applicators just to add a fine layer of glue along. Just, and then sticking in place. So, and once again, just going to check and, and see how far up to add the glue for the railings there. But it's just that first little layer, isn't it? The rest is going to be over the edge of the card. So again, just in with that glue applicator, a little bit of our everyday glue, just smoothing that into place. And then butting those up against, you, you're basically building this sort of feel, this scene whereby you're breaking up that background. You're bringing in this idea that, you know, the, the boats are out at sea, your couple is watching them. You've got the, the balustrades, the railings on the inside. When you open it again, it tells even more of a story there, doesn't it? You can see every, every element of the card design. We can even go in with a little bit of netting on our railings as well, if we wanted to. I think a little bit might be quite nice. The way that these sort of flowers and nets are hung over the corner of the landlocked corners does mean you can go in and gently trim away the, the blue corner and it will still look like the netting is hung. So you can choose whatever you'd like to hang it on, which is again, again, quite a fun way of crafting with your die cut designs. It just gives you a little bit of extra choice with them. This one I'm going to take the netting down I think about here so again just following one of the larger size ropes and just following the the design detail down. Mm, do we include that flower at the bottom? I think let's snip that down because I think that's going to be a little bit too long. And of course because you can cut and layer and add and then obviously print out your vignettes. It's up to you how many times you want to do this. You know, you could layer things up several times. You can add to them, you can take away. Um, it's a really nice way of crafting because it really is up to you where you choose to stick, what, what parts you choose to cut away. Remember when, you, when you've got them home and you've cut out the images, they are yours to play with. So just hooking that on like so. And then just placing that down. Like so. Again, it's just it's just these little added details. It's just these added extra layers whereby you're building in this theme, this story. It really does feel like the seaside has shut down for the winter. You kind of got leftover sort of um, railings, you know, a little bit of um, 
discarded fishing net over one of these as well. It's just just fun. Now I am going to include the little um, shop front sign as well. Um, I'm going to leave it blank because then it's it's your choice what you want to add on this. Perhaps it's a personal message. Perhaps it's a, a happy birthday. Perhaps it's an age. Perhaps it's a name. It could be any number of things whereby you're adding in the details. But I'm just going to go in again with the glue along the bottom. I'm going to leave the sign itself loose because it creates a nice level of um, movement on the front of your card because this also hangs down from the top. So you get that lovely sort of swing effect from the sign. And that I'm going to place also in front of the railings. Now, I know this area could look quite busy if you prefer something more paired back. Just you don't have to build the railing element in front. But again, it's just an idea of giving you options and different ways of using the die sets all together. Now, a little bit more sand, because I do feel like we've got sort of bunches of sand around the one side. I'd like to include some more sand on this sort of side as well. I think let's go in and snip Again, my little sand dunes out, and then I can choose where I'm going to place them as well. Just rounding and shaping. Like this little sort of um, little slumped area of sand, if you like, I'm going to use. Because I think he's going to look quite nice pushed up against, yeah, the boardwalk there. So rather than having the boardwalk look like he's just kind of stuck there on top of the sand, by placing a layer in front, again, it gives that idea like we saw with the path whereby the sand's pushed up into the areas for the boardwalk there as well. And just a little bit of glue. And setting and instantly you're giving this story of downtime, off peak, off, off season at the seaside. We've also got these little ones. Now, I haven't got anything in the middle here, so let's include a little um, sand divot in the middle, like so, and place. Again, letting, letting just snippets hang over the edge so it looks like your scene is trying to escape off the, off the front of your card. And this little piece, I do feel like I've got to add something there. Maybe, actually, let's cut it down further. Just to tie in this kind of element with the rest of the background, I feel at the moment he's, he's kind of sticking out a little bit. So let's just trim another little area of sand down, like so. Yeah, just a little bit, just to join those two areas together. A lot of the time when it comes to, to making cards or coming up with ideas, it's just about sitting and playing. I mean, you've got the downloads, uh, the free downloads of the artwork. You've got your dies in front of you. What I'd always suggest is have a lovely afternoon just cutting rather than thinking, OK, well, I've got X amount of time. You know, I need to make this card and I need to have, um, I don't know, this die cut and this die cut and this die cut on it. Don't limit yourself. Have lots and lots of die cuts out and available to you so you can pick and choose. And I think it just gives you a really nice way of playing with the elements. Now, let's see, what else do we want to add? We have got some really lovely shells in this collection. Little bits of coral, which add just a spectacular amount of texture to your designs. Might trim that down there. We've got our big sort of ammonite shells here, which are pretty. The whelks too. Lovely, lovely, lovely little elements. And these almost, you can build kind of your own little um, looks, your own little scenes, uh, just by layering up the shells. You've got your scallop there, conch shells. Just gonna have a little section selection out in front of me. As I say, you know, with a lot of these things, it does make life just wonderful being able to pick and choose a few different shells from the design, a few little, um, oops, come here you, that one's trying to make a bit for freedom, a few little shells, a few different compositions, by layering them up you're giving them each a different look as well which is, which is fun, little whelks, and you have got the two sizes in this particular die set as well which means you've got options for building, which which is nice. It gives you just a different feel. So I've got three different compositions of shells there. Where are we gonna add our little shells? Let's snip down our coral first off and then see where that takes us. 
And if for any reason when you've snipped into something you don't like it, you you know what, you haven't lost anything because it can always go in the pot for another day and you can just print off another one and print and then die cut a new one to use in, in your designs because you've got the option there. You don't have to just use things as is. So I think that one there. And then let's go in. Do I want a bigger composition or do I want a smaller composition? Let's go with a decisions decisions let's go in with a smaller composition on this side so for this one i'm just going to be sticking again with the, the flat glue the everyday glue and again use my glue applicator because we're working with a nice fine die cut here so just being able to pop a little bit of glue on an area just makes things really really lovely like so and then glue on the back of my shell as well just working around that composition probably using my tweezers Hannah rather than my fingers before I get glue everywhere just lifting and tucking and placing this is the lovely thing about working with carnation die sets is there are so many just little elements and and the way the stories come together the way the die cuts come together there's there's boundless opportunities isn't there there's boundless ways um and endless ways of putting these together to give you really different and dynamic looks because it might be that you might want to make this card several times perhaps it's something you want to pop on your craft store you're of course more than welcome to do so we have a completely open angel policy but each one could be slightly different just with the positioning or the die cuts you choose to use or the areas in which you choose to pop them which i think just makes especially when it comes to handcrafted cards something so so special about them that one i'm going to place there again let it come over the edge just like so so here we've got a little composition of shells it's just filling up that foreground it's giving a little bit of added interest to that corner similarly we've got just an area here whereby all right this is not always going to be seen because it's on this side when you open the card but just because it's not going to be seen all the time doesn't mean it doesn't have to be a, a, a pretty card as well. So we can use perhaps the little bit of coral that we snipped away from earlier. Remember, nothing's wasted. I did say it would go in my box for another another day, but I think we can use it in this little one. And just like so. So these little compositions, for example, perhaps you've created um, more of a standard kind of card design and you want something on your insert. You want to draw in the outside of the card in by having an insert this sort of size and just having a little area where you're building a composition with your sand dune, your coral and your shells. It just adds that kind of finesse to the inside of your card. So here, a little bit of glue. And again, we're going to be ducking and also the shells again another thing with carnation that they do so beautifully are their color palettes um for each collection you know we do go in with such wonderful wonderful colors and the way the colors all then work together it's just beautiful. It's such a pretty, pretty soft colour palette, this one. But even like the blues of that ammonite shell match in with the blue tones in the sea. They match in with the blue tones from the sailing ships. And that gives a really sophisticated level of coordination to your card designs as well. And then a little whelk. Again, so again, you've got a little composition going on there. It just fills that space. It brings in that detail. So even your sort of edges are beautifully designed. And then all that's left, well, I say all that's left, I've got more die cuts in front of me, which I am determined to use. Um, we've got some beautiful shells for the front cover here as well. So I think let's go in and why not? Let's just go to town with a nice large shell design on the front, because after all, this is going to be your first impressions of your card. So again, just layering these up and just seeing how I'd like to sit them on the front of the cards, so building a little corner area of these card designs here. Excuse me, also just have a little mouthful of drink. Thank you. Ah, oh, Janine. Hi, gorgeous. Long time I see here. Ah, thank you, Janine. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Janine is our rather fabulous lead DT. And, and her cards are the ones you see 
uh, gracing the pack charts for all, all of our shows. And she brings us so much wonderful inspiration as well. So thank you. And a huge thank you, of course, to all of the design team who work so hard throughout all the year to bring you lots of lots of inspiration too. Uh, there. So I'm just sticking the coral up i know this is a little bit of a well you know in in real life obviously these seashells are <laughs> really much the same size as those deck chairs a little bit of artistic license with this one but remember because you're layering and building they are far in the foreground these are going to be much closer to you so it does give you this a little bit skewed but this sense perspective in your design as well now for these ones i am going to use pin flare because they just are on the front and i have shaped them so i do want to keep that nice balled out look to the designs uh, so conch shell next again just layering over my coral just gently ammonite just a little bit oh i've got a sticky finger i don't know how i've got that ammonite i might tuck under again being sure i suppose it doesn't actually matter with that i'm not not getting sort of interfering with the edge of the card too much but of course these will be coming over the edge so it won't matter it will be like the end of the world if we have them too far over the edge well and Kristen says hello from a snowy Sweden oh wow I bet that looked absolutely fantastic I love a bit of snow we haven't had have we had any this year here we had a flurry didn't we a few weeks back but it didn't it didn't stick around um and I'm, I'm so desperate for it to snow properly. I know you, when I say properly, I mean lay. So, you know, you wake up to that wonderful sort of uh, winter wonderland. Totally impractical because obviously the whole country shuts down when it, it snows just even a tiny bit here in the UK. Um, I really want Reuben, uh, my little boy, to see snow for the first time. And Morph. Morph's not really seen it properly either, my cat. Um, he did see a bit last year. But I don't think he really understood what was going on. Um... So we got our little composition on the front again, breaking up those layers, breaking up those little edges and just adjusting to we're happy with the look. Now it's time for our characters because I just love them. I think they are just the happiest little bunch of sea creatures. So we've got our little happy crab. Have you ever seen a crab look so happy? He is just a delight. And we've also got our sentiment as well. So it's these kind of finishing touches. So we've built our scene and absolutely if you were just sending to someone who loves the ocean, loves the seaside, for example, this could be just as is. You could add your happy um, birthdays, your anniversaries, whatever it might be for whatever occasion, and this would be perfect. Um, but I really do love the whimsical nature of Carnation Crafts characters, so I did want to feature them in this card as well. So I think our little happy crab could be perhaps saying hello on the boardwalk there at a jaunty angle. Because again, when, when the card's closed, you don't see him. A little bit like the boat on the other side. And when you open it, it's like a little surprise. It's like a little smile. And then I think for our oyster catchers, let's have them right in the foreground in front of our boat as well. So you're kind of giving this sense of perspective. So for our characters, I'm just going to move my, my card out of the way just a second. So I've got a little bit of space. We are going to use our foam pad and our, our foam, dense foam mat, I should say. And then just ball out our happy little crab, give him a nice roundness to his claws and his shell. And the same with our oyster catcher, both our mummy and our baby. Again, you see me just sort of looking and checking what size size ball I'm going to go in with. First off, I'm going to go in with the sort of sm mid smallest one and then go into the wing with the smaller size there. So you're picking out areas and adjusting the size of the ball tool that you're working with so it's appropriate. Same with this little little wee chappy. I think we'll start with that one just to ball out the, the design and then perhaps go in sort of for the wing and then for the little eye and the head with the smaller ball tool as well. So just to have a look at your design and choose the size of your ball tool accordingly. Now they are balled out, we can go in with our little wee bird and once again pin flare I'm a massive fan of pin flare and this one i'm gonna have her oops just behind the little sand dune so she's kind of just picking her way through the sand dunes there. i'm going to tuck her tail in so she's not overlapping the edge of the card too much 
there so we can still post and then her little chick is going to be in the foreground now i do make my tweezers with this one because little baby chick is just a little bit smaller and again because i've tucked the little leggies in behind the sand dune for mummy they are nice and secure but it might be actually that i go in with a little bit of white glue just on the tips of the the feet there i'm just uh, brushing off the excess glue of the tip and then smoothing that down just so if i did want to post this this little chick's feet are going to be stuck nicely in place so he or she is just in front of mummy but in front of the sand dune as well so the nice thing about layering like this building the story is it's the kind of card you need to look at and then look at again and then you discover more things and i think it's a great way of uh, keeping a reader's interest for example when i say reader we mean the person that's receiving the card um and it really just show the attention to detail the time taken the care taken with the creations that you've made because it's, it's lovely isn't it to receive a handmade card our little crabby i'm just going to open the card fully to pop him into place i'm going to slip him behind the shells there but kind of dancing on the little bit of the sand dune like so again his little claws coming out to the front and now we can choose a position for the sentiment now i was going to go originally with the sentiment on that side which i thought was quite nice or of course you could have the sentiment on the inside as something to discover or of course you could have him in the crab's claws <laughs> It's quite fun, isn't it? But I think by looking at the card, actually, there, there feels like the perfect place. So this is the sentiment from the Coastal Currents um, card shape. I've raised that up on a little bit of foam, obviously cut from the, the, the vignette. So you have this lovely blue um, font and then I've used the matte layer just in white. So again, what we're doing is we're drawing in that base layer from the card and having that just hugging that corner kind of sets that scene everything then comes together as a whole story you've got your front cover opening to reveal your whole beach scene i'm trying to get that hole in shot with everything going on there even even down to the inside there you've got the little shells and things everything works together and of course because we're using vignettes as i turn that round anywhere oh, that's hard to get on camera where the dies overhang or the die cuts overhang is still coloured as well. So it looks beautiful from any angle. And that's our little design for the day. I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's a little fun, fun little card. Um, of course, absolutely go ahead and create your versions of these. I cannot wait to see um, what you would do if you share them in group. Um, do tag me as well because I love seeing your cards and your creations and your takes on them as well. Let me just turn that camera around. There we go. Um, Mary says, I think I would put that in a box frame and put it on my wall. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, Anna Christine says, I would have big issues giving away such a beautiful card. I would keep it as a 3D painting. Ah, oh, Anna, that's a lovely idea. But don't forget, of course, because we've got the vignettes. And as I say, you can download them and cut them and print them out as many times as you like. You can make this over and over, which I think is lovely. And as I say, each time will be slightly different. That's the card shape and design from today. Just so you can see it on... Um, the front facing camera as well what i will do as i always do each facebook live is i will uh, take a picture of this and pop it up in the facebook book group so if you did want to copy it exactly you are more than welcome to do so um let's just make sure i'm not missing any questions oh lots of thank yous guys you are more than welcome i think this will actually be um my last I'm trying to think last facebook live of the year which is nice so um we will be back in of course in the new year with more facebook lives so we'll pop them up this afternoon so you can mark them in your diary um which is which is fun um sue says hannah i cannot believe how much you can pack onto a card area i'm not sure i have that confidence to keep adding great card sue give it a try do you know what if you if you are a little bit hesitant and you don't feel like you want to um you don't want to layer up too much you don't have to stick anything that's the beauty of this you could absolutely dry run this lay everything out and just say to yourself does this work quite often it's nice to take a photo of it on your phone uh, come away from it for a few few hours go and get a cup of tea and then come back to it and have a look at it on your phone because things often look different um in the different ways we view them as well Sue. so that might be worth considering um 
Anna Kristen says, is 3 p.m. on Tuesdays or is it set time for lives? We we have 3 p.m. is normally our set time for lives, um, but we don't have a set day uh, for Facebook lives um, simply because um, I have a little boy <laughs> and uh, the Facebook lives do have to work around him. So it's whenever uh, daddy is home to look after Ruben. Um, I can hop on and do a do Facebook Live. And it does also depend on when we're on air with Create and Craft as well. So we do try and work it around the show times too. Um, normally, as I say, we do try and advertise them further in advance. Uh, so if you do um, head on over to the brand page that you're watching this on live and click on the events section, um, I'll be uploading some more um, dates and times for the upcoming Facebook Live demonstrations, uh, Anna Christian. So hopefully that will that will keep you updated um let me just see i'm not making sure i'm not missing anything uh lots of thank yous coming in no guys thank you for always sharing your time with us which is lovely fiona says great demo as always Hannah. thank you fiona that is very very kind um maggie says i'm late but we'll certainly use this card thank you hannah don't ever worry about being late as say we will always upload the facebook demonstrations uh, afterwards for you to watch back at your leisure and also um on youtube as well um Angie says, oh, Angie says, Merry Christmas from Greece. Merry Christmas, Angie. It's lovely to hear from you, sweetheart. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're looking after those kitty cats. Um, lots of people looking forward to the next Facebook Live. Lots of Merry Christmases coming in. Thank you very much, guys. It's absolutely wonderful. All that's left to say is say, I will, I will pop up the ingredients list and also the, uh, the photos of this particular card. Please do stay safe. Have a really, really wonderful Christmas Um. Carla's back with you on Thursday on Create and Craft at, I don't know, I'll put the times up if I find them. <laughs> and then I'm back um, on Create and Craft with lots of love as well on Christmas Eve. I am the last show of the day, um, the last live show of the day on Christmas Eve on Create and Craft. So please do come and keep me company because I'm sure by that point, knowing what it's like at Christmas at Create and Craft, anything could be happening but that is to say if we have any stock left because i know stock is is getting fairly limited on the lots of love collections so if i am back on your screens it will be um this friday at 3 45 carla will be taking you through thursday with this lots of love collection and the next facebook live i'm trying to find the date i am trying to find the date I'm just looking and there's no date in front of me. I have I am I have a wall of post-it notes which tell me where I am and what I'm doing at any given moment of time. And <laughs> I can't see this Facebook live at all. Um I'm gonna guess. Guessing's probably a very silly idea, but I think it's about the 3rd of January, so it's not too long to wait. Um, but do join us for that. I will pop the details up after this live as well. Uh, in the meantime, guys, have an absolutely spectacular Christmas. Lots and lots of love to everyone. Stay safe, take care, look after one another. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of your posts in group as well, Carnation Crafters. Bye, everyone. Take care.